Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining Training Tuesday today to learn about concrete form pressure. I am Drew Roby, filling in for Heidi Reese this week, and I'm with Dayton Superior's Marketing Department. Let's go over a couple of housekeeping items to before we, we start our, our training today. Uh, we have muted everyone on the call so that there are no disturbances, uh, but you are more than welcome to send any questions that you may have via the Zoom chat functionality. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have a short Q&A session. As a reminder, each of our webinars are recorded and placed on our Dayton Superior YouTube channel, as well as our DaytonSuperior.com website. Just search Training Tuesday and you'll see the link to all of our past webinars. Today's presentation is intended for training purposes only, and you can find technical and product information mentioned in today's training on DaytonSuperior.com. For those of you that are not as familiar with Dayton Superior, let me tell you who we are. We are the leading provider of engineered solutions and products for the concrete construction industry and specialize in accessories, chemicals, and forming with proven results through our Simons Forming Shoring portfolio with systems that are adaptable, strong, and save labor costs, and our concrete repair and restoration products specifically formulated to meet the design specifications and new construction or retrofit and repair needs. In addition, we provide bridge deck, rebar splicing, precast, and tilt-up construction engineering solutions, products and training geared for your needs. Today, we have one of our product development engineering specialists, Adam Karasani, with us. Adam works on new product development and has been an engineer with Dayton Superior since 2020. He is a graduate of The Ohio State University and is also ACI certified as a tilt-up technician. Adam has been key in developing many of our products that help you on the job site. Let's welcome Adam as he helps us gain some new knowledge on understanding concrete form pressure. Adam? Thanks, Drew. Uh, as he said, my name is Adam Karasani. I'm a product engineering specialist here at Dayton Superior, and today we'll be going over an intro to design and concrete form pressure. Uh, so what that means, we're gonna be talking a little bit about, uh, about our formwork the forces that act on them, and other variables that can affect the concrete. So first we're gonna talk about those forces that affect the panel. Uh, to do this, we need to understand one thing, and that's that wet concrete acts like a liquid. So the exact water content may vary based on the application, uh, the specific pour, uh, but it needs to be in a somewhat liquid state in order for you to pour the concrete into the form. What this means is that we can use fluid equations like the one on the screen here to determine the pressure of the concrete. So P equals WH. This is uh, how we determine pressure in a panel. So P is your pressure uh, and measured in PSF, pounds per square foot. Weight is the unit weight of concrete, typically about 150 for normal weight concrete. It's pounds per cubic foot multiplied by the height, or in this case, the depth of the concrete measured in feet. So you may not recognize this equation, but you're more than likely experienced it in some way before. So if you've ever gone into the deep end of a pool, for example, and you go underwater, you can actually feel this. So the, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure. If you get to a certain depth, you may even feel your ears pop from the change of pressure. Uh, we can use that same principle here uh, to apply to concrete and pressure and form work. So take this cube here, uh, how do we relate pressure to the force in the panel? This here is a, is a one foot cube of concrete. So one foot by one foot by one foot. Because of the height is also one foot, you can use that equation P equals WH. 150 times your one foot height gives you a pressure of 150 pounds per square foot. Essentially what that means is that each of those red arrows you see apply a, an outward force of 150 pounds in all directions. That's because a liquid pushes out uh, in a, with a pressure that is equal in all directions. It, essentially, the liquid wants to escape whatever container it's holding it. Uh, so if we look at an application here, this is an eight foot form here, uh, and they, put, they poured the first foot of concrete. So again, that uh, simple equation, P equals WH, you have 150 times one foot of concrete, your pressure is gonna be 150. Uh, what that means though, is that each of those red arrows is 150 pounds of force. So that left form there is experiencing 150 pounds of force. And that right form is also experiencing that same 150 pounds of force. 
And you notice in that equation too, it's just weight times height. There's no length and there's no width associated with, because those dimensions don't matter in this case. Um, for that equation and for pressure in concrete and pressure in liquids for that matter, the, all that matters is the height and the weight. So it doesn't matter if you have a one foot, a two foot or a four foot span like shown here, that pressure is gonna be equal for all three cases. And as you can begin to stack that up, again, this is an eight foot form here shown, uh, that pressure will continue to increase. So you can think of it, think of it like a, a block of weight. So for each cube of concrete, each one foot cube of concrete, it's like 150 pound weight. So if you try to pick one up, it's gonna be 150 pounds. If you pick two up, it would be 300 pounds. It'd be 150 times two. And as you go all the way down there, you'll see times eight would be 1,200 pounds. So essentially the, the force is greatest at the bottom where the pressure is also the greatest. And uh, so concrete acts like a liquid as you're pouring it, but you know our goal is to make a solid structure. So it begins to solidify over time. So as that bottom section begins to solidify, you'll see that pressure dissipate and almost disappear. Uh, so if you poured like a five foot wall here, it'd be a 750 pound force at the bottom. But as it begins to solidify, that pressure goes away and it becomes more like 600. And that, that's true as you continue to go up and, and the concrete continues to solidify. The temperature also affects the setting time quite significantly. Um, so for example, if you're in a warm, warmer climate, somewhere like 70 degrees, uh, typically that, that can take you know, about an hour for the concrete to set. But if you're somewhere a little colder, like Dayton, Ohio, um, that might take a little bit longer. So in this case, it was hour and 45 minutes or almost two hours, almost double the amount of time to set the concrete. And at any given temperature, I think this is the important part here, at any given temperature, the faster the pour, the greater the form pressure. And so what that means is that the faster you pour the concrete, the more pressure and the more liquid pressure you're gonna get, the less time there is for that concrete on the bottom to solidify. And the reason I say this is, I think this is the most important rule here is because this is the number one thing you can control on the job site. This is the one thing that uh, regardless of all the other variables, you can control your speed that you pour control the pressure on the panel. So again, the slower you pour, the lower the pressure is going to be at the bottom of the base of the panel. So this is a typical application here with an eight foot form, what we see. Uh, so typically you pour it at a pour rate with about four feet per hour. And what that's going to give you is two separate runs that allow you to create a, a more lower pressure. And uh, we'll see it in the next slide here next few slides, excuse me. Uh, so you, again, the, your concrete temperature uh, will affect the pour time pretty significantly. So uh, for winter projects, it's usually assumed about 50 degrees. Summer projects, usually more around 70. And to visualize the pressure uh, in, on the forms, uh, we have a diagram here. So if you think about it more, more accurately, uh, you're not always going to have entire one foot sections of concrete, right? It's not gonna be as simple as just one foot, two foot, three foot. Um, you could have half a foot, you could have a few inches or anything down in, in between. Um, so if you look at the top of the panel, your height is essentially zero at that point. So your pressure equals the, the weight times zero. So your pressure would be zero at the top. But further down at the bottom where it's at its maximum, you have your pressure in this case times 10 feet, um, would be about 1500 PSF. So that's where it's greatest, but it can fall anywhere in between there. So it's, it's represented better by this triangle here where the pressure tapers off to a point where it becomes zero. And as I mentioned, you can control the concrete uh, pressure by controlling your pour rate. So in, the, in this picture here, you see uh, they gave it time to solidify and that bottom section. So if you're using a slower pour rate, taking your time more, that bottom has time to solidify and reduce the pressure at the bottom and it kind of tapers off or cuts off that triangle there. We got a few key things to remember here. The wall thickness does not affect the pressure. What affects the pressure is just the, the height or the depth of the panel. And then the concrete densities, I mentioned that 150 pounds per cubic foot number, 
That's for normal weight concrete. That can vary between lightweight or high density concrete. Uh, it's a simple substitution though. So uh, for example, a one foot of concrete with lightweight concrete would just be 130 times one. So that pressure would be 130 instead of 150. And a few characteristics to remember here, like we said, wet concrete acts like a liquid, which allows us to use that equation, P equals WH. As it sets, it becomes a solid, so that pressure is reduced. And it's the contractor's responsibility to control that pressure uh, by either slowing it down, speeding it up, whatever they need for the job. And one last note to remember, uh, concrete is strong in compression and weak in tension, which is the reason for something like reinforcing bar. So some of the factors that affect setting time, slump, vibration, admixtures, and temperature. So we're gonna go over all four of these here. So slump. Slump is the measurement of flowability of concrete. Basically, it's how liquidy your mix is. To measure this, you'll fill a cone about 12 inches tall with concrete and then just flip it over. However much your concrete sinks down, that's what your slump is. If you fill your cone, if you think about it like this, if you fill your cone with a, basically a solid mixture and you try to flip that over, it's not gonna move at all, it's gonna retain its shape. So your slump would be zero, it doesn't sink down at all. But if you filled it with a glass of water and you lifted the cone, it would drop completely. So it would drop that full height of 12 inches. So a liquid would have a slump of 12 inches. But concrete's somewhere in the middle. It's somewhat of a hybrid between the two. So typically what you'll see is a slump closer to about two to four inches. And showing here, this is the process for, this is a scientific method, by the way, uh, to, to measure the flowability of concrete. So the process in which it's done, you'll get about three layers of, you know, get a good mix of the concrete, you'll, you'll tamp it down and you'll smooth out the surface. And then when you flip it over, you'll just measure the distance from the top of the, the cone to the top of the concrete. And again, slump is a measure of consistency, flow, and workability. And that's an ASTM standard, so it's something that's regulated. Uh, the higher the slump, the wetter the mixture. And so that's why I mentioned if you're, a 12 inch slump would be a liquid basically. Um, so you want about two to four inches in general. And there's different slumps for different purposes. So um, you could have a more liquid mixture, for example, it'd be a lot easier to pour into the panels and to kind of spread it out, get, get good consolidation around any components like rebar in there. Um, but the problem with that is the more liquidy it is, the, the longer it's gonna take to reach its max strength. And it, it's gonna be more difficult to work with than, uh, or the, the solid mixture will be more difficult to work with by comparison. So here's an example here of them measuring slump in the field. Slump is a very good way to get a field measurement and a good, measurement in the field of how flowable your concrete is, how your mix is performing. Um, it gives you a really good picture of the concrete itself with a very quick, very simple method. So vibration. There are two, uh, three types of vibration we'll consider here. So there's internal, external, and revibration. So internal is what we see most commonly. That's if you're using some type of hand device, uh, like a vibrator where you put it down into the concrete, uh, and you use that to create better consolidation, better mix of the concrete. There's external vibration, which is usually not recommended. That's vibrating something other than the concrete itself, such as the panel. Um, but again, that's usually not recommended. And then there's also revibration, which is not recommended either, which is uh, remixing concrete that has already been mixed. So if you were pouring it in, in multiple shops and you had already mixed that bottom four feet, you wouldn't want to mix it again. Uh, when you're pouring the second batch, it can affect the, the aggregate. There's also admixtures. So these are chemicals you can add to the concrete itself before it gets to the job site that can affect your setting time. So things like retarders can slow down your setting time or accelerators can speed up the setting time, depending on what you need. And I mentioned it a few times already, but concrete temperature. So the lower the temperature, the slower it's gonna take for your concrete to set. It'll take a longer time. The higher temperature, usually it sets a lot faster. Um, and usually air temperature coincides hand in hand with concrete temperature as well. 
Lastly here, I wanted to point out this equation that's a little more advanced version of it. So P equals WH is a very general way to measure pressure. It's a very reliable and easy to use equation. Um, but ACI also specifies a more advanced equation that takes into account your, your chemistry coefficient, uh, your concrete weight, your rate of pour, and your temperature. And so this is more of a scientific method to get more of an exact answer. And they also specify it for different elements like a column versus a wall. So this is a lot more of an exact method, but that P equals WH method is more conservative. So there's no case where uh, the ACI equation is gonna give you a higher number than P equals WH. So P equals WH is always a good, just rough estimate, a good safe estimate to use. All right, it was a quick one today, but uh, we do have other training resources available. So if you go to DaytonSuperior.com and you search Training Tuesday, we have more presentations like this on forming and a variety of other accessories that Dayton Superior sells. You can also email Chuck or Heidi at training at DaytonSuperior.com. They offer more individual training and they can provide more information if you reach out to that email. All right, I wanna thank everyone for joining today and ask if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you, Adam, for all that information. And thank you to all those on the phone who came to learn with us today. Like Adam said, go ahead and shoot those messages over in the chat functionality on Zoom if you have any. Uh, and while you're doing that, just want to remind everybody that these uh, Training Tuesdays happen every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have different subject matters with our different uh, various experts covering uh, subjects. And today's presentation has been recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel and our Training Tuesday video page on DaytonSuperior.com. So just give you a, a second here to see if there are any questions. If we got one. Oh, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, just a good presentation, explained well. Great job, Adam. Thanks, guys. All right. If there are no other questions or comments, thank you for attending, and everybody have a great Tuesday.